Coming up, got a load that's high and wide? Well, who are you gonna call? Railroads handle all kinds of oversized cargo, and today, we're following one of these moves as it slowly creeps into Atlanta. And yeah, they'll face a few challenges along the way. Plus, we'll look at one of the largest rail cars on the planet. All that and more is next. Don't get me wrong, truckers move some pretty big loads, and sometimes they even haul rail equipment. But when the cargo is really big and heavy, trains are probably the way to go. The railroads call these loads high and wides, and I think you can understand why. The book, The Railroad, What It Is, What It Does, defines high and wide as, quote, a term referring to outside dimensions of a car or open top load that exceed the normal clearances on the route to be traveled. So far, the loads I've shown you were big, but small enough to be tacked on to a regularly scheduled freight train. But the really big stuff usually travels by itself. And this is what I'm talking about. Siemens Energy uses specialized rail cars to transport some of its largest products. I'll explain what they make in a minute. An EMD SC70 ACE was pulling this short train, NS052, through Doraville, Georgia on February 6th, 2023. That giant gray depressed center flat car is KWUX200. The reporting marks mean it belongs to Utility Power Corporation, or Siemens Westinghouse Power Corporation. The car weighs in at 475,000 pounds and has a load limit of 955,000 pounds. And when it's loaded, it's not supposed to go more than 25 miles per hour. It has a total of 20 axles and special hydraulics that allow it to lift and shift itself to avoid obstacles. A blue extended vision caboose brings up the rear of the train. It belongs to Fracht USA. That company is a freight forwarder, basically a liaison between the shipper and the carrier. Now that was my first taste of a rail car like that in motion, but it wouldn't be long before I got to see just how challenging a move like that can be. What's your location at 056? Now we're knocking down Ray right now. All right, all right. How's it going, John? Ah, slow and steady. Money in the bank, over. I hear you. It's August 5th, 2023, and we're back in Doraville, Georgia, looking at that same huge depressed center flat car hauling another Siemens energy load. These come from Charlotte, North Carolina, where Siemens has a facility that assembles and services power generating equipment like large scale gas turbines, steam turbines, and generators. In this satellite view, courtesy of Google Earth, you can see a few large rail cars, in addition to what looks like KWUX 200 loaded and ready to go. Back in Georgia, I can't identify exactly what's under all that white shrink wrap, but it's big enough that two crew members are monitoring it from the caboose. They're approaching Norfolk Southern's small yard in Chambly, Georgia, and the engineer up front is not taking any chances. My high and wide profile says I'm good for track speed with these cars on the left, but I'm going to go slow through there. Here in Chambly, we can see and hear that the crew was not assigned the newest or best engine today. I think that loud noise you just heard was the front air hose hitting the locomotive's plow. That engine has seen better days, but the car and its load are an impressive sight. I now decided to follow the train south into Atlanta. I'd catch up to them as they approach another challenge, the Amtrak station. Yeah, there's a low roof up here at the uh, Amtrak station. I'm going to set my conductor down and watch it by. The engineer is probably referring to the roof over the stairs that lead to the platform. The conductor and other crew members would watch as the train slowly moved forward. It looks like they had no problem clearing it, and eventually we're back on the move. All right, here we go, Caboose. 
Okay, if you thought the car we're chasing is big, well, check this out. Ed Raines sent me these pictures he took of a giant schnobble car. Ed is now retired, but back in April of 2005, he was assigned by the railroad he worked for to follow the huge car as it moved from Monument, Colorado to Denver. The load that day was a crude oil cracking vessel that came from Italy and was attached to the rail car in Texas. This red beast has 36 axles and a load limit of 1,779,260 pounds. Like I said, this is called a schnabel car. Schnabel means beak in German, and you got it. The two parts of the car resemble a bird's beak. The load is basically suspended between those two beaks and becomes part of the car. When these photos were taken, this car was the largest in the world. It was eventually surpassed, just barely, by another schnobel car. The consist here was pretty impressive. It had two cabooses and a support car with extra wheel sets for the schnobel car. A big thanks to Ed Raines for sending those photos. He reached out to me after seeing another video I did about high and wides, and I'll be sure to include a link to that in the end screen of this video. All right, back to the chase. Hey, caboose, we cleared that solar panel about six inches. That's what I heard as I drove to find another place to record NS-056. I decided to set up on top of a bridge that spans Inman Yard in Atlanta. Of course, down here, there would be more obstacles to look out for. Uh, oh, 056 to that caboose. Go for caboose. Yeah, there's some foot pegs sticking out of that pole that's leaning over. Can you see that? I lost sight of the pegs sticking out of the side of the telephone pole. Yeah, it's kind of up a little bit. I, I think we're going to clear it. They'd eventually come to a stop just before this crossover. Yeah, we're here at the one two crossover. Hope this engine ain't gonna try and go by me. Uh, he's going to the shop with them engines. I'm, I'm gonna have to bring you one off to the local yard. This is as far as I would chase 056 today. It was a pretty slow run. In the end, it took them around an hour and a half to go 15 miles, but hey, Sometimes that's what it takes to transport massive cargo like this safely and damage free. If you thought that high and wide was impressive, well, check this out. This train is hauling the components that make up NASA solid rocket boosters. I'll be talking all about what rail fans call the rocket train and the history of space railroading in an upcoming video, but that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.